Hi, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of the Manufacturing IT Podcast. I'm joined today by Mooney Mohamed Tahir, founder of Beyond 4.0. Mooney, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, thank you and welcome to everyone to this podcast. Great to have you here, Mooney. Obviously, we connected uh, a little while back uh, off the back of your uh, recognition from the Onalytica Top 50 Industry 4.0 Influencers. So, look, just want to say kudos for you for making it to that distinguished list. And it's through that that we connected. So, I'm proud. Uh, yeah, thank you. With pleasure. So, I was also surprised and proud also to be nominated uh, in this list of 50 experts around across the globe. In industry 4.0, and uh, I will be happy, and I'm happy to join you today to de- discuss about industry 4.0 trends. That's great, and and look from my side, I've had a few guests, <clears throat> or quite a few guests from the US, quite a few guests from Europe, and so you're our first guest from Africa, and I know it's an area that you're super passionate about, about bringing innovation and, and industry 4.0 to Africa. So we'll definitely touch on that topic for sure, Mooney, but. Look, give everybody a bit of an intro into who you are, what Beyond 4.0 does, and maybe say a little bit to your background and kind of credentials. Yeah, with pleasure. So I'm Mohamed Tarmouni. So I, before founding Beyond 4.0, so I'm with industrial background. So I worked as continuous improvement expert. So in several sectors, including automotive, pharma, and aeronautics for the last 10 years. After 10 years uh, as an uh, industrial manager and also in charge of Industry 4.0 Roadmap, so I decided to launch Beyond 4.0. We are based in Casablanca and targeting the North African and also all the African market. And we are specializing in integrating Industry 4.0 solutions. So we started by IoT for real-time OE, so overall equipment effectiveness. And now we are moving to a new segment, which is computer vision, in order to improve uh, efficiency and productivity inside manufacturing plants. So we are uh, targeting uh, mainly industrial uh, customers. So not in one sector, but in several sectors like pharma, like food and beverages, and, uh, and so on. So are developing our own solutions, hardware and software, but also we are partnering with uh, big names and especially startups in the field of Industry 4.0 to integrate their solution in our region, which is North Africa. No, that's that's great. And good to get an overview, Mooney, of your your experience. So, look, I think most people now, and especially the audience watching the podcast, understand Industry 4.0 is the digitalization of manufacturing processes and uh, and all of the related components of that. But I wanted to ask you, you mentioned you were, you were working on projects for industrial IoT, you know, for OEE. Maybe if you could speak a little bit about to, to kind of how that works and, and what you've, you know, projects and case studies that you've worked on in that. Yeah, maybe I can, uh, because me, I'm not a developer in, in my background. So I was for the 10 last years in charge of improving processes mm-hmm. using the, the tools, several tools. So when I decided to open the company, uh, I decided to open it because I was a customer before. You sat that side of the table. Yes. So <laughs> the problem, pro- pro- not the problem, but the constraint that I, I want to, to resolve by uh, using these tools is that to help manufacturers understand what is going in the shop floor. Yeah. So the first topic that I am addressing, especially for manufacturers, is to understand what is our real-time OE, mm. what is going on the shop floor. So one of the first and biggest use cases that we, we did is that what one of the big multinationals here in Morocco, we started in Marrakesh plant, and then we spread uh, across Morocco, and then in Africa, Algeria, Ghana, and other countries, is to, to start by using the first step of industry 4.0. As we know, there is the first step, which is acquiring the data, Mm. displaying the data, analyzing, predicting, and machine to machine. And the state where our manufacturing here, especially in my region, we are between first step and second step, acquiring and displaying the data. So we had some issues because uh, all uh, persons, I'm talking about IoT, but we don't talk about people that will use this IoT. Mm. 
So the first challenge that we had, yeah, we, we developed a very good platform, but people weren't able or ready to use this platform. So it yeah. took us maybe one month or two months for this plant to import people, to, to explain to them that these new technologies will not replace them, but will, <laughs> yeah, they will enhance them. Yes. So uh, what we did is that we, we developed a solution with a partner from Estonia. So the, the solution, it's a plug and play solution that you can uh, maybe use any type of machine mm. and acquire the data, some easy data, which is the counting of the number of parts. Yeah. And it took maybe one hour to deploy. So when you deploy this counting, you have the first step of acquiring data to calculate the OE. And uh, one of the, the, the biggest challenge that we had is that with the customer, when they want to talk about Industry 4.0, they want to go directly to the last step, which <laughs> automatize everything. Yeah. And even when we are talking about MES, Manufacturing Execution System, all is automatized. Let's imagine that we have a machine and uh, the, uh, the PLC send you some data that the machine is stopped because we opened the door. Mm. But why we open the door? So we still need the interaction with human. Yes. So uh, people and uh, what they, they understand by Industry 4.0 that we will automatize everything. That is not the aim. The final step. Yeah. That is not the aim for the beginning. So maybe yeah. for the first, second year, and maybe never. So it depends on what is the ROI that we are looking for. Sure. So... Uh, to complete in this uh, successful use case, so we started by implementing the the sensors, the IoT sensors, linking this with MQTT and uh, sending data to the cloud. Yeah. And then we, we start displaying the data. So when the customer, especially the production and the maintenance team start to see, to see the real-time data, they were surprised because they were talking that the OE, it's about 80%. But yeah. the rea reality, we are talking less than this, maybe by 15 or 16 points. Wow. So they discovered that, yes, there is something that this new new thing will help us improve our, our uh, calculation. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense for them, but also that scared them. Because, <laughs> uh, because when you are... You were at 80% and uh, in one hour after you are at 50 or 60%. So it's it's difficult to to, to assimilate in the beginning. So sure. uh, in our, in the team that we have, not only in my team, but also in the customer team, which is they are expert in operational, in Lean Six Sigma and operational excellence. So it's to, to enhance people, to let them understand that these tools are there to help them. Yeah. And this when, is one, sorry, yeah. as I say, this is one of the key pieces that we're seeing, especially across, you know, with AI becoming so prevalent, there's a concern that some workers will be not needed anymore. And this, you know, advancement of technology is going to reduce the workforce. But what you're saying and what I'm hearing from you is that industry 4.0 and, and the data collection side, which is where you're talking, that's going to enable workers to be more efficient at working, not as a replacement for them. Yes, it's like uh, maybe in the uh, the 90s or in the 20. So uh, when Lean Six Sigma start to be deployed across the globe, so the expert that start Lean Six Sigma, they ha they heard uh, in uh, in the shop floor that yeah, you are here to that we will more work fast. Mm. It's not the aim of Lean not fast, but to work better. So to eliminate yeah. what is the waste, the bottlenecks, and it's the same thing with Industry 4.0. So this type, this type of tools, we are talking about several types, IoT, AI, cobots, are not here to, to, uh, to, to uh, change the operator or mm. to re replace uh, an operator by a robot, but to enhance these people by these repetitive tasks to some valuable, Task that he can do. It's like analogical. Maybe when you want to be entrepreneur in the maybe in twenty years ago, thirty years ago, if you don't know how to use Excel, Word, or PowerPoint, you are deserve. Uh, it's a disadvantage for you. It's yes. like now, if you don't know how to use 
AI, there is someone who know how yeah. to use AI to replace you, not AI who will replace you. So that is, uh, that is, the, yeah, that, that is, uh, so for, for me, Industry 4.0 is here not to replace people, not to reduce jobs, but to, to create more value, value uh, added for people and to create more value for all the processes. It's, it's a great point you raise. And, you know, what, what I was going to ask you is, you know, how much of your time is talking about the people change management, change management about perception? So obviously there's a big conversation to have about technology, but, but how much of your time is speaking to people about, you know, the people change perspective and how to get operators, workers using technology for their advantage and not, you know, resisting that change? Uh, in my region, so where I uh, I work uh, the most, which is Morocco and North Africa, mm. I I can tell you more than sixty percent. We are talking about change management and to yeah. to convince people that these new technologies are here to help them to help. Yeah. So yeah, uh, for me, this in this first step is a, a cultural change. It's like uh, uh, social media, maybe. 15 years ago <laughs> we're talking about yeah you must use social media for marketing mm. with some big nouns so they will not uh, uh, understand what you were saying but now they discovered and all people now are using social media for marketing it's, it's not negotiable thing. yeah it's same thing for iot no, iot no. yeah it start to be democratized but still yet we need uh, like experts that uh, not only in IoT but in change management and in Six Sigma to convince people that you must do this. Maybe yeah. in two or three years uh, after this, we will have uh, no more discussion about the the benefits of IoT. But exactly. now we need this. No, it makes perfect sense, me. And look, so from where I operate, so so I'm based in London, but we do a lot of our industry 4.0 recruitment across North America and in Europe, and we see companies now are, you know, really becoming data centric and aware of the data, utilizing that data better. In your perception and, and in your experience, given the region that you operate in, how advanced are companies adopting Industry 4.0? And, you know, we can speak to IIoT, but, you know, in your, in your viewpoint, what are you seeing as adoption of, of Industry 4.0 tech? In a uh, range from one to 10. Mm. It depends if they are multinationals or nationals companies. Okay. So I'm working with some national companies where I go to talk with the the, the local team. They are already aware. So from one to ten, we are talking about five to seven. Okay. From some local companies where they start to discover, we are talking about a range from three to five. Wow. They they knew about. There is something industry 4.0, hmm. but they knew that they read from articles. They didn't implement any use cases. So they are, are interested to discover. And uh, when they are interested to discover, it took too much time to convince them. So from, hmm. I have some, some KPIs. So with multinationals, it took me two months of negotiation to start to deploy the PO, yeah. so the POC, for example. But with nationals, where they just start, so maybe from eight months to one year in discussion before starting deploying the first POC. And see, look, doesn't that, that must be a challenge for you. I know you're, you're super passionate about bringing industry 4.0 advancements and the benefits of data, benefits of the operator to Africa. And I, I know you're talking about North Africa and the region that you operate in, but isn't that frustrating for you that you see the benefits, you see the, the operational improvements, but it takes such a long period for you to get the POC, you know, from your own commercial perspective, maybe it would be easy just to do the multinational businesses, but that's in conflict, I guess, with your passion for promoting Africa. Yeah. Uh, so in the beginning, I was frustrated, but uh, if we do, don't do it, so the, our region will be always behind other regions like yeah. Europe, like uh, North America or, or Asia. So, we need to educate the market because the market is not yet educated about the advantages. So yes. what, what uh, recently I did some, something uh, 
I want to uh, to uh, congratulate one multinational here, big multinational in uh, in Morocco that accepted from the other customers that we have locals to come and visit their plants and mm. see how Industry 4.0 uh, is transforming the the plant. So when you are you go to a plant as a consultant and you start talking. Uh, they, they, it's not 100% credible. Okay. So they need to see. So when we are taking them one one day, one full day in a company that they are using real uh, IoT, real AI, real cobots in a daily basis, so they go back to their plants convinced that they must start the same thing as soon as possible. So uh. one of the big challenges is to change the mindset so it's a, it's a classic you know the the chicken and the egg scenario where you're, you're what you're saying what i'm hearing from you is that this multinational company opened their doors allowed you know yeah. people from national companies to see what it was doing and that's what built the trust and credibility but just going in as a consultant and saying you know try this do that this this you know there, there needs to be more proof from that credibility yes yeah yes and especially Especially because uh, even for us as consultant, Industry 4.0 is new in our region. Yes. So in terms of expertise, we don't master all the, the fields. Yeah. And also it is a disadvantage for us to help the customers go fast and deploy fast these type of solutions. That's why we need uh, expertise. That's why me, uh, especially I'm trying with my team to see how what is doing uh, what 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 is doing better in other regions and to have yes. some, some benchmark uh, so I'm used to go outside to see because uh, when I worked for some aeronautic companies big multinationals I was in the benchmark team okay. so when I go to other plants maybe in UK or in Mexico or in Spain for example I discovered that uh, they did something it's a quick win for us in in Morocco and it will be deployed very easily and uh, have big impacts. It's the same thing for Industry 4.0. So people that don't try yet need to see. Yes, it's really, it's cool. you know, it makes a lot of sense. So, and I'm I'm working with a couple of software companies that operate, I guess, the, the next generation in MES, the low code, the very modular based system where they can, you know, work with the business users, you know, demonstrate an ROI do a small project, demonstrate the, the benefit. And then that project can, you know, be a, a gateway into much larger projects, much larger transformation. And I guess the risk for everyone is getting stuck in that pilot purgatory, do the project, but things don't change. And I guess it's great for you, someone like yourself to be so focused on the African region, but also have your eyes and ears aware of what other companies are doing for the quick wins, for the quick ROI, because, you know, who can deny when it's, you know, case study in front of you improving it yeah and also i'm convinced by another thing it's about the process it's mm. not the technology that will improve the process so for example where we are talking about we want to deploy a mes or a iot solution and we want to improve our oe by 15 percent. it's impossible if you don't have any operational excellence program that it is already done in paper and manually to analyze the data it's, uh, if you, you have the data that is in real time and you don't analyze, you don't take actions, you cannot improve by 15% your mm. APIs and you don't take actions. So the process is, uh, is, is, is critical. So if you don't have a process or a procedure of quality or operational excellence, you don't need uh, to deploy in this state uh, IoT or real-time monitoring systems. You need yeah. to improve. get the IoT process in place. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and so look, as a as a founder, Mooney, as as somebody who's been an operator who's kind of understands that shop floor, and now someone who's you obviously running a business and and doing what you do, time is limited as it is for us all. But what are the kind of maybe two or three pillars that you might have when you speak to a new customer? to understand whether this is going to be a technology transformation, whether this is going to be a people transformation, whether this is just going to be a process transformation. What are the kind of three, I don't know, two, three, four pillars, whatever you have, 
um, that that kind of gives you that framework to to base it on. Yeah, so to convince a new customer, so the question is that about about uh, to convince to, new technology. Yeah, maybe to convince yourself that this is this is a company that is primed to benefit from your service. Yeah. So for the first thing, so when I started maybe two years ago, I didn't select the type of customer. So any customer that that uh, respond to my request via LinkedIn or via my commercial thing, I go and I discuss with them. But maybe after these two little years of experience, I have some feedback now. So mm -hmm. I am trying to choose the type of customers that I want to go deeply with. Yes. Because there is some customers that are not ready for this type of solutions. Yes. When you you go to a customer that have big production, big plants, and when you ask about if you have uh, daily meetings to analyze yesterday KPIs, and they start <laughs> getting at you and uh, no. So you you must know that it will be too difficult for 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 you as a consultant or as a developer of IoT solutions. Yes, to give impact in this type of companies because it will uh, need a lot of change management. So you must all, uh, be with them each day. Yes, to to, to change the, the the mindset and to let them know that it's not this type of solution that will help them improve the KPIs. It's the daily process that will improve the KPIs. So, so the number, yeah. Yeah, one of the first thing, because I am with a background of black belt in Six Sigma, so I know the methodology. When I enter in a company and they start uh, looking in the shop floor, there is no visual management, no KPIs, no uh, <laughs> daily meetings. I know that it will be tough, a tough uh, mission for me. It's not, don't uh, mean that I will not take this customer, Yeah, but I know that uh, it's not two months or three months uh, for this project, maybe a year or two years to have a, a good impact. That makes a lot of sense. And understanding, did this come? are these companies even aware of what the KPI is for, for whatever it yeah. might be? And that makes sense. Look, I want to I wanna ask you about a subject that I'm passionate about. So my, my recruitment company is focused on Industry 4.0, and it's about you know improving the awareness of manufacturing because we see a lot of kids, they go focus in it and, and you know google facebook and you know commercial it programs and maybe don't think how it and and uh, software can be used within manufacturing and so creating that awareness is, is something passionate to my heart how can people from africa young african uh, kids who were interested in you know it and wanted to improve their career what, what advice could you give to somebody at you know university level who uh doesn't understand how you know, industry 4.0 can help their career. Yeah, so before giving advice to them, so maybe I will give advice to the companies mm. to go share knowledge. Because for me, when I was uh, uh, an engineer, student engineer, so uh, my aim when I wa will have my degree is to go into GAFAS because it's it's good there. And there is no concentration or no lot of discussion about IT in manufacturing. Mm. which is uh, very, very huge because in manufacturing, you are manufacturing all the type of things that you, you eat, that you use each day. Yeah. So the impact also is huge. It's not like in social media or in retail or in e-commerce, but also the impact is huge in industry. Yes. Maybe we, we, if we can start by promoting this type of, uh, of jobs, IT, jobs in manufacturing fi uh, side, it will be the first step. Yes. And the second step also for students, it's not only to concentrate in coding. Yeah. So you must understand why you code. So because when you are a developer for GAFAS, for example, you are a user also, an end user. So you understand why you need to deploy this type of, uh, of feature or to develop mm -hmm. this type of feature. But when you are developing for an industrial, so you don't understand what is MES, what is yeah. a machine is, is producing, how, how is the process. So you must understand the process, the why, 
before starting just coding. Yes. So, uh, and maybe for the, the, the companies that are hiring, before that the, the, the new engineer or developer join the project, maybe if we can let him have a visit in the shop floor to understand how is the process and now it will make a sense. Yeah. So for him. So maybe these two advices for the companies to promote and also for the engineer to start understanding the aim before starting developing. And one of one of the it's great to hear you say that. One of the companies that I'm working with in the US, they they have, you know, I think I can't remember the technical term, but they have an open day to allow graduates to enter the factory to see what a smart factory looks like because there's this perception that it's dirty, it's dangerous, it's a men-only environment, it's, you know, it's unsafe or whatever. And that perception is, of course, changing with digitalization. And it's great to have, you know, an open door where you can go in for one day and, and look at what a cobot looks like or what looks like what a, a digital factory looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, Moody, we're, we're getting to the last question now. This has been a great chat. And what, what are your predictions for the next five years within Industry 4.0? You know, let's talk maybe just locally from your region. You know, what are you what are you thinking will will industry four point look like in the next five years for you know your region? It will be booming because there is a lot of low industry, especially in our region. So the mean power is very low, and uh, uh, there is a lot of sectors, a lot yeah. of especially after COVID, there is a lot of replacement from Asia to our region, which is. Mm. Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, uh, mainly. So there is a lot of opening companies in automotive, in aeronautics, in pharma. So a lot of possibilities to deploy new things. But the challenge, maybe for the next years, is to launch new startups yeah. from our region to develop their own solutions. So a North African solution, maybe to to go and to export to Europe and so on. So actually, yes, there is there is some some use cases that uh, we can deploy, but small use cases. We don't have a big name, like uh, a big name for MES or like a cobot solution. Mm. So we just do the integration in our region. What I predict is that uh, with the big number of engineers that are uh, each year graduating from from uh, from engineering school, maybe we will see in the fifth five next years uh, some booming in launching new startups. Yeah, especially with this new age of low code, no code, because it helped a lot. Definitely, develop. I think that's a great prediction, and I think that's probably something that's that's going to be great to advance in Africa as a continent as well. You know, more local technology companies, more companies, or more engineers building technology in Africa for for Africa. Yeah, yeah, there is there is a lot of potential, especially uh, as you know. So Africa is the future of of the old world. So mm. there is a lot of youth here, and there is a lot of potential. So mm. what what we need is that to give them the the possibility to to invent new technologies and to trust the technology because it's a matter of R and D. It's yeah. not only, especially in this field of industry 4.0. There is a lot of competition across the globe. It's so not, we need yeah. uh, we need money, we need yeah. time, and we need to give the chance and the potential will be bring it by these new new engineers. Mm. No, it's a great point to finish on, Mooney. And look, I've been to I've been to Morocco, I've been to Marrakesh. It's a, it's a great city. And you know, as I say, you're the first guy from from Africa to speak on the podcast. And you know, I'm passionate about expanding technology and opportunities for people. You're obviously equal to that. So it's been great to have you on the podcast. Great to hear you share your views and insights. So we're really grateful. Thanks for joining us. Thank you a lot, and have a good day, Daniel. Thank you for welcoming me. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.